Hey guys, welcome to my home. Today I'm going to be making a single point sling for Stephen Jeffries. I'm not going to tell you where he lives, but Stephen Jeffries, this is your single point. Um, I've already got my, uh, my uh, bungee brand bungee that I buy in a 500 foot spool. <laughs> um, and this is US made. Everything I use is US made, as you guys have heard me say like a bazillion times. Um, everything, I, everything I use uh, is US made and everything I use to make slings is also US made with the exception of my Japanese scissors. I use a sewing awl from Sailrite. Actually, I buy it from Sailrite, but it's from Stuart Manufacturing Incorporated, made in USA. And then I use Speedy Stitcher um, thread, made in USA. And this comes from Indiana. Uh, can you tell that made in USA really matters to me? Um, you guys that have communicated with me in the past who've asked questions um, sometimes I'll get I'll, I'll get people asking a question and they'll go hey can somebody communicate with me I've got a question about something or another and I'm the one that's answering I need you guys to understand I'm the only person at tier one citizen you're in my home right now this is a $15 table from Habitat for Humanity not because we're poor but because when we moved and uh, this is a rental home when we moved um, the big table that I'd made for my wife didn't fit in the small rental home, so we had to sell that before we moved. And uh, for the longest time, we were using a plastic card table, which was getting old real quick. So my wife got this from Habitat for Humanity. But I say this so you guys understand, I'm a regular guy, just like you. Tier 1 Citizen is me, one person. Um, customer service is a huge deal to me. USA Made is a huge deal to me. And when I say to you, your slings are handmade, they're literally handmade. I don't sew them on a sewing machine because that also qualifies as handmade. I'm hand stitching your sling, which I'm going to do for you today. So this is a uh, single point sling with a QD on it. And this is tubular webbing. As you can see, it's quite literally a tube. And what I do is I take the length of bungee slide it in, I use a dowel rod that I've cut to a prescribed measurement, I seat the bungee, pull the dowel rod out, place the bungee over my neck, or I'm sorry, place the, the sling over my neck, center up the bungee. This bungee has like a center line on it, it's got like a little row of, of uh, three hash marks down the middle of it, and I use those hash marks as like a lay line. I use those hash marks as a lay line to make sure that the bungee actually lays dead center in the sling. And what I do is I pull back and make sure that the sling is set, that, that, the, uh, that the webbing is at the very tip of the needle. Put it back on the rubber mat, pull the needle out, reinsert the needle a few millimeters forward, push it back through ram it through. Don't run the needle through your finger. A friend of mine uh, years ago told me he actually ran the needle right through his finger doing this. And every time that I, yeah, let, me, let me pull back through to show you. Every time that I set the stitch, actually let me stop here for a second. You'll notice that what I'm doing here is I'm using 180 yards of waxed nylon thread. And this is unbroken. So the entire 180 yards is going to run through this sewing all. Um, each and every line of stitching is an unbroken line of stitching, meaning that every stitch above, uh, every stitch in front of and behind the other is locked to one another. As opposed to with a sewing machine where you have a top thread and a bottom thread. Um, in industrial sewing machines, you know, they do great work, but it is a top thread and a bottom thread, which is why when you find that magic thread, you can go and you can take an item apart by just yanking. Well, you can't do that with this because each and every stitch is locked to the other. So it's, it's darn near impossible to get one of these apart casually. And trust me, I've tried, which is what these are about. Because when I was going through a testing phase, I was taking slings apart. And I was having to work so hard to cut slings apart that I finally got to the point where I just said, screw it. And I just started cutting sections of slings off just so I could go out them with exacto knives to look at the stitching to see if anything was coming loose because it was hard for me to pick one stitch apart. That's how tough it is. That's how um, 
that's how well made I've stitched these um, and they're, it's really hard to get these to come apart. So anyways, the stitching is pulled tight and then I take and watch this thread right here. See how it stands up? Because what I'm doing is I'm pulling. I'm cantilevering against this hand and I'm pulling this portion down and it stands the thread up. And what I've now done is I've taken that lock stitch and I've actually run it inside of the bungee. So the stitch itself is now locked center inside of this bungee. Put another line of stitching in just a few millimeters down. Run it through. Ram it through. Grab the tail. You pass the tail through the loop. Pull tight. And then recenter that thread again. And then one more. Every once in a while you've got to pull off little bits of wax because there's so much wax on this thread. The wax, by the way, guys, is used as a lubricant so that the thread slides right through whatever it is that you're stitching. And anyways, you have to peel it off because it clogs the needle. Once I've got the last one centered up, I cut one end off and I leave a generous tail. And then go to the other side and cut that off. Guys, when I say handmade, I really truly mean handmade. Um, people that have contacted me when they, uh, when they ask, when they, uh, oh, by the way guys, what I'm doing here is I'm scrunching up the webbing into the palm of my hand here. And there's a certain prescribed amount of, I call them scrunches, that I do <clears throat> to create the tension or to create the resistance to the bungee. The bungee that I have will stretch 100% its length. So if I've got three feet of bungee, I can actually get six feet of stretch out of that bungee. But what I don't want to do is allow the bungee to reach its maximum stretch, which frankly I think they're being conservative because I've pushed this stuff even further and it hasn't broken. But anyways, um, uh, um, I've had people contact me and, uh, and ask me questions you know, like they'll send me an email, and I immediately respond. In fact, two or three days ago, a gentleman, I want to say it was like almost 11 o'clock, and a gentleman sent an email, and I happened to be working on something, because guys, I work all the time. Um, if I haven't said it already in this video, Tier 1 Citizen is just me. I don't have people. No one, I have no employees. So anyways, I responded to this gentleman, and he was floored that I would respond to his email at 11 o'clock at night. And I told them, customer service is a really big deal to me. And if I can, if I can answer somebody's question, and it, you know, if it's a simple question and it's 11 o'clock at night, but, I, but I've got the answer, well then, give them the answer on the spot. Um, the, the absolute best one ever was last Christmas. Um, I was working, and uh, I think it was last Christmas. My wife is a nurse. Um, I used to be a cop. My wife is a nurse, and for us, holidays are just another day of the week sometimes because, you know, we'd have to work. So, anyway, she was working. We'd already done Christmas that morning, and she'd headed off to work. And so I was sitting there working on videos, just using the day to get caught up on video. And uh, a gentleman asked a question, and I immediately responded. And I mean, like, immediately responded. And he goes, what? And, and he goes, at, at first, I thought when I saw your email, I thought it was an automated response. Guys, I don't have automated responses, ever. Actually, no, that's not true. When you buy something, that's an automated response. But what I, what I mean is, when an email comes through to you, and, it, and it's like from me, it's, that's me writing it. And um, so anyways, I ended up chatting with the guy back and forth by email and answering all of his questions, and he, he ended up buying a sling. And um, actually... I can't remember if he had a sling and needed, and needed something, needed to know something about it. Anyways, the point is, the point is customer service matters. Um, so we ended up having a nice conversation on Christmas Day. And um, guys, I say this repeatedly. Customer service is a big deal. Made in USA is a big deal. Now, here we are in 2022. And now people are understanding China's a problem. Um, 
I am I am not ever going to send the production of my slings offshore, which is which is the new term for made in China. Everything I use, all the components I use, uh, even what I sew it with, everything I use is 100% U.S. made. I do not do cheap. I do not do, I, I don't farm out labor. Everything is made by me, by hand. And guys, it matters. Um, at this part in the sling, by the way, I now have to hold it over my head. And I basically am making a popping motion with my wrists. And I'm pre-stressing this. And what I'm doing is, I'm making sure that if that stitching is going to fail, it's going to fail in my hands and not yours. So I'm completely maxing this out way more than you ever would ever have to do. I'm maxing this out over and over and over, trying to get this to fail. And what it does is it actually sets in that stitching really nice and deep into the webbing. And it locks that stitching and it drags the stitching because remember the stitching is one continuous string but it's it's stitched like this so it's driving those knots in tighter on one another and now once I know this is not going to fail I melt the ends now check this out check out how much flame is required to actually get the, the ends of this to melt One of my customers had one of my slings a while back and he said in one of your videos you talked about how flame resistant true mil spec webbing is and he said and I took one of my slings he said a company name I'm not going to tell I'm not going to say what the company's name is but they're a very prominent sling maker and he said and I passed it in the flame and the webbing went and I went yeah because it's garbage it's not really true mil spec USA mil spec webbing this stuff actually is I was at a class a while back and somebody said, yeah, that's what we used to tie down Hummers on pallets to launch them out of aircraft with. And I went, oh, okay, well, there you go. Didn't know that. Now I do. And you'll notice I'm leaving the video uncut so you can see how long it takes to melt the ends of that. I flatten it underneath my handy dandy Corel bowl. This is a bowl from when we went on vacation to Glacier National Park with our kids many years ago. And uh, we bought these Corel bowls with a blue band so we would remember the trip. And so I use one of these for making my slings. When I flatten it, you can't, the camera's not going to pick it up, but there are these tiny little ridges that I can feel. So now what I do is I pass it back through the flame to get those ridges to melt back in. And that's it. Ready to go. All right, this is a QD. By the way, guys, the, the sheets that I use sit on the table. And um, I want to make sure that when I make a sling, I'm making it for a person and not just some amorphous blob out there. Um, I guess I've never actually covered this. I don't work ahead. I don't, um, I don't cut. Like you'll notice this bin beside me only has this only has this in it. Um, this is this is for a friend. I'm waiting for him to come and pick it up. But um, uh, the only webbing that's in here is this and a prototype that I was working on that you don't get to see. But anyways, this is from the dog leash. I was doing some measurements for the dog leash. But I don't work ahead. I don't have like like stacks of webbing that's pre-cut. My bungee is here. My paracord is my paracord is here. And um, I don't work ahead on anything. When I'm making, if I'm making two slings or seven slings today, I cut out exactly what I need for that day. Webbing, bungee, um, all the components that are needed for that day's production are laid out on the table. And I make slings for individual people. Jeff, Marcus, Steven, Lisa, Dave, Larry, right? I make slings for people. I do that so that I never forget 
that I'm making slings, not lollipops, because this is a very crucial component to your fight. This is as this to me is as important as the firearm it's going on to. A sling is to a rifle as a holster is to a handgun. Would you use a crap holster in a fight? No. Why would you use a crap sling? So use components that are made specifically for the fight. My, my big pet, and I'll show you when I finish this, my big pet peeve with single point slings is that the companies that make them either don't understand or don't care that what they're making is something that is easily producible but not very good for fighting with. And I know this because my customers say to me, when I use your sling, it just feels right, man. It just, it just, it feels like it was made for, for, for fighting with. Well, yeah, that's because they are. That's because the equations that I use are things that I've been using for years and I've tested in, in classes, in vehicle classes, in CQC classes, long range classes, mid range classes. I've rolled in the dirt with it, I've bled on it, um, I've broken it, uh, in some cases intentionally, out of sheer curiosity, what would it take to break it? Um, some of the original prototypes that are hanging in my office, I actually clipped to a tree, and I hung from it. And back then I was, I was 380 pounds or something. I mean, I was, I was a chunky monkey back then, bigger than I am today. And um, and that sling is still hanging in my office, still 100% usable. Um, it's a sling that I no longer use because my name is on it. Um, I used to embroider my name, Miranda, here, so that when the rifle was in use, so when the rifle was in a in use here, the name would be yeah the name would be on the back. So the instructor standing behind could see my name, and automatically call out Miranda, stop and I would stop. And then when instruction phase and I would allow the sling to go here, then the name would end up here so the instructor could see me from the front. And, um, and I realized the day and age that we're living in now, the last thing you need is to have your name on something. Yeah. Somebody just figured that one out. It sucks guys, but this is the age in which we're living now. So anyways, I start the line of stitching. I pull enough thread through to make sure that I have what I need for the job. I melt the end. <sighs> pull it back through. Advance it just a little bit. Push the needle back in. And you'll notice that this is one continuous unbroken thread each and every time. Now watch the thread right here. See how it stands up? What I'm doing is I'm pulling the thread through and it stands the needle, it stands the thread up because I'm actually pulling the, the, the lock stitch, I'm pulling it into the inside of the webbing. So the, the lock, the, that, that, that loop, that knot that I've just made in the, in the, in the stitching is actually now locked within, within the thickness of that webbing so that it's not easily accessible to abrasion. Guys, I have had to take these slings apart. Um, let me rephrase that. I've taken these slings apart and I've had to use an X-Acto knife to do it. They were that hard to get apart. You're never, I, I will never ever accept anyone ever telling me, my sling just broke. There is no, my sling just broke. I know this for a fact. Because I have intentionally abused the stuffing out of these slings and I've never broken one. I've been downright abusive to my own slings and I've never broken one. So if someone says, my sling just broke, uh -uh. that means you're dragging it behind a pickup truck. Which, by the way, is why I do not send slings out to media, and I do not send slings out to law enforcement. Those are two groups who think that abusing things is testing. You want to test something? Use it. Use it for an extended period of time. Just use it. And you'll be, you'll be surprised how you can make something fail by simply using it. It's like when I worked for Inforce, part of my job was testing lights and what we found was the most abusive test you could ever do to a light was just living with it. Having it in your pocket, sweating on it, in and out of an air-conditioned car, in and out of an air-conditioned house. 
Occasionally you pull out of your pocket, it topple out of your hand and hit the floor. That was real life testing, but that takes time and companies don't want to put that time in. They want to buy some machine that shakes that light to pieces so they can find failure points, but you're never going to find real failure points until you put things out, which is why Sig Sauer, um, which is why Sig Sauer constantly has to have recalls because they put out crap weapons and then they allow you, the buying public, to beta test the weapon for them. Oops, there I am stepping on toes. You'll notice this is not a fast process, which is why I say to people, I'm not sewing these slings. I'm hand stitching the sling. There's a difference. Sewing a sling is zipping it across a sewing machine. And yeah, there are sewing machines that would do this task and this would be probably two seconds. And then that would probably be two seconds. That'd probably be two seconds and I'd be done. And I'm sorry, in another two or three seconds for the buckle. And I, I could pump out slings like, like crazy, but I, I won't, I won't do that because sewing machines use a top thread and a bottom thread. And I do not want to give you guys sewing machine quality. I want you guys to have old world hand craftsman stitching, which is why it is so gratifying when I hear from customers, they write back and they say, I just got my sling. I took it out of the package and I am so blown away by the quality of it. I put it on my gun and it is an exact fit to my body and it's an exact fit to exactly what I thought it was going to be. Thank you for making such a high quality product. When I get those emails from you guys, you have no clue what that means to me. Man, that totally makes my day. Because like for example, today, got up at 7. Now, I know that someone says, yeah, well I get out of bed at 5. Okay, well, I was up till past, uh, actually I was I was up till 11.58 last night, got out of bed at 7, and got going on my day, and when I finish making slings, I'm driving out to the range, and I'm going to do a, uh, a video for you guys on the, newly, on the newly extended Overland range, and then it's 12 o'clock now, and when I finish that, I'll get home just in time to get cleaned up, have a little bit of supper sit down, answer comments, answer emails, start editing some videos, and then slide into bed late and do it again tomorrow. But I'm cool with it because as the saying goes, if you find, what is it, make money at something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And that's how I feel. Because of you guys, because of your support, because of your sling purchases and your donations, I'm able to do this, I'm able to give you guys very high quality slings. And you'll notice my price points, actually, you know, I need to address that. My price points are, are very competitive. I used to have a, uh, oh boy, I so badly want to say the name of this company, but I'm not going to do it. This is a company that ended up putting out a two-point bungee sling that looks surprisingly like mine. And one of my customers got pissy with me one day and he goes, actually he wasn't one of my customers, he was a viewer. He was a viewer who then turned customer and I'll clarify that point in just a moment. So anyways, this guy goes, why would I buy your sling when such and such sling costs less than yours? So I went to that, to that website and I go, how are they making the sling for so little money? I mean, they claim to be USA made, but I know what these components cost and I know what kind of time is required. I thought, well, maybe they're using a sewing shop. And a sewing shop can, guys, so sorry I have to tell you this, USA made can literally mean a sewing shop comprised of like Chinese people or Mexicans. And yeah, you can have, you can have USA made, but it's not going to be made by American hands. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll side trick here for just a moment. Um, one of the reasons that uh, Italy was hit so hard in the early days of COVID was because Italy has outsourced a lot of their labor to China. Now, what that means is there are Chinese people living in Italy doing, doing Italian labor. In the same manner that we have a lot of Mexican labor here in the United States, in Italy, their Mexicans are Chinese. Go ahead, feel free to get offended. I don't really care. And so 
you may be getting something that says made in Italy, but in reality, it's, it's made within the borders of Italy by Chinese people. So it's really made in China. Which is why made in the USA, made by American hands, really is a big deal and it matters. Because there's an attention to detail that matters here. You'll notice the reason I'm doing this very slowly is I'm actually using the lines that are on the webbing as, as, a, as a, like a template to run stitching lines. They don't always track straight and it drives me batty, but these are, these are pretty much impossible to get out. Once I, once I do what I just did there, that's permanent, period, for the lifetime. In fact, one of my customers said, the only question I have about your slings is, which one of my grandchildren I'm going to give the sling to? And he says, and take note of the fact that right now all I have are toddlers for children. He says, because I have no doubt your sling is going to outlast me, and it's probably going to outlast my kids. I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably going to outlast me and, and last well into my children's adulthood and probably go forward to my grandchildren. And I said to him, I have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, that my slings are going to last that long. This company whose website I went to to compare their price point as compared to mine, I finally figured out what the deal was. They were, doing, they were doing an a la carte thing, meaning the base price of the sling was, was I'm not going to say the price because it will probably narrow it down for you guys. Um, they had a base price, but the funny thing was that once you added <coughs> the QDs to it, the QDs, these things, quick detach. Once you added the QDs to it, you added like 30 something odd bucks to the cost of the sling. And then you put it in the shopping cart, and then their shipping was ridiculous. And then they tacked on, I forget what else they tacked on, and all of a sudden their sling went from 40-ish, 50-ish, I forget what it was, to like $109. And I started laughing, and I said to the guy, my sling, back then, I used to do just a one price out the door, and I said, my sling is $99 shipped, done, with the QDs. And I said to the guy, before you start making comments in the comment section, trying to create a dumpster fire, perhaps you ought to do your research first. But I realized at that point that I had to change my business model because I was losing ground. I really was. And so when I went to the, to the, to the business model that I have now, um, what you get when you, when you order these slings, I forget, it's, I, I want to say it's like $64. And then you add your attachment points. Actually, no, I'm sorry, the, um, the single point slings are our base price, but um, the two point slings, because there are so many variations, there's a base price on the sling, and then you start adding your attachment points, and that starts adding a little bit of cost. And I say to people, get what you need, not, don't buy based on a price point, buy based on what you need. And by going to price points, it, it honked me off to do it because I consistently was finding that people were buying something that was less than what they needed because I was hearing from them. I bought your, I bought your single point sling with, uh, I bought your two point sling, uh, no, no, this is a single point. I bought your two point sling with, uh, with triglides only. How do I make this work? And I go, well, what do you have? I mean, I don't even know what your weapon is. So they would, they would tell me what their weapon is. And then I'd say, um, well, what are your attachment points? And I'd say, I don't need a picture of your gun. Just show me your attachment points. And I'd go, well, dude, you should have bought the QDs. Well, it costs so much. Oh, stop. Guys, you're shooting yourselves in the foot. Please. You need to buy what you need, not what saves you money. And I get that things are tight. Guys, if you knew, if I haven't said it in this video, I'm sitting at a $15 table from Habitat for, Habitat for Humanity. I'm sitting on a folding chair. I'm not a wealthy person. I drive a 12-year-old truck. Okay? I'm not a wealthy man. Um... <clears throat> but what I do know is that I buy the things that I need to fill the needs that I have. And I don't particularly worry about what their costs are, because if it's something that I desperately need, then I spend the money on it. And I want to make sure that I have the items that I need to fill, to fill a particular need. Sorry about the noise. My, my daughter and my wife work from home. I'm actually very grateful about that. So they're upstairs working and they're probably on break right now which is why they're being loud. But anyways, um, buy what you need. 
because cutting corners. Hey, I'm making a video down here. Um, buy what you need because buying things based on price points just shorts you. Spend the money. How's that go? Buy once, cry once, or something like that. Spend the money up front for what you need, and you'll be set. So anyways, Steven, there's your sling. It's going out today. Um, guys and gals, I am big on customer service. I am big on quality, hand-stitched, 100% USA, USA made quality. Uh, this is a really big, big deal. And what's interesting is, I have a customer base now that is so loyal, they keep coming back. I've got customers who have now bought so many slings, they have now broken the double digit mark. One guy has bought so many slings, I finally had to ask, I'm like, dude, what are you doing with that many slings? Not that I'm complaining, he says, I gift them to people. I go, what? what? He goes, I give them away to friends and family. And then they come back and they buy your slings. And I go, are you kidding me? And then this guy logs on after that conversation, buys more slings, and sends me a donation. I'm humbled by that, guys. Um, if you can't tell, I can feel the tired right there in my eyes. I feel it because I'm so tired right now. But i got to keep moving because America's going places that are bad. That's why this is so very important. That's why this level of quality is extremely important to me because when that fight comes, I have 100% faith and what I've made and sent to you that it's not going to leave you hanging. Guys, quality matters. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and your slings and practice. Have a good one. Off to the range I go.